Hi, my name is Tras Machula, and in, in today's video, we're going to talk about Sadhguru and five secrets he may be keeping from you to grow in your meditative experience or in your spiritual journey. Very quickly, I'm, I'm a fan of Sadhguru. I, this is not a video to criticize him. I'm very impressed with the work that he's done, his followings, and so forth, and with all the charity work that he does. But as a spiritual teacher, and specifically a spiritual regression hypnotherapist, in my everyday practice, there are techniques, knowledge, and so forth that I use with clients that will help you in your meditative growth. So here, let's get into them and I'll explain them and I'll share exactly how I view things with respect to Sadhguru. So first of all, one thing that Sadhguru likes to do is the meditations that he creates is meditations based on mantra. For example, I am not the body, I am not the mind. As uh, I utter these two sentences, with inhalation, you take this thought, I am not this body. With exhalation, I am not even this mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind. And when you're a hypnotherapist, one of the things that you try to do is not use the word not, do not use a negative. So when, as soon as you hear the word, I am not the body, then what do you do? You focus on the body. When you hear the word, I'm not the mind, what do you do? You focus on your mind. So it's ideally not the best not to use that word. Now, this mantra has worked because what it does is it's in a repetitive format. You're able to calm the mind. When you calm the mind, you have access to greater knowledge greater consciousness. And it's a simple mantra meditation. He also does use sound, for example, Om. And he does do some spiritual journey meditations. But in these spiritual journeys, he holds back. And I'll explain to you what he holds back on. He holds back on you expanding. He gets you to a manifestation state and then that's it. He doesn't permit you to expand even greater, unlocking the greater wisdoms from within. Now, second of all, I'd like to share with you the other secret that he kind of keeps from you. Now, when he's looking at the techniques of using meditation, he focuses on a scientific, for example, principle by talking about inner engineering, by expanding your consciousness and using yoga and mystical methods, for example, in the Vedic mystical tradition of permitting you to tap into your consciousness. Now, once you tap into your consciousness, that's great. It's a great meditative technique, but then he limits you. For example, there are other mystical teachings on earth. We have the Kabbalah, Sufism, apart from the Vedic understanding that he has, but he's going with that Vedic understanding. And then it, as soon as we get into the inner or higher dimensions, it opens a plethora, Google of mystical teachings of understanding that we all have access to if we know where to look. So again, he has that limitation with respect to where do we look for our own expansive abilities. Thirdly, in a dream to me, Kriya Yoga came through. And I, at the time I was discussing this with a medium and a dream came in. I'd never even heard of Kriya Yoga. I heard the word Kri and that this was a way to connect to God. And subsequently I got in touch with the Yogananda program to learn Kriya Yoga in order to connect to God, in order to understand God and expand in this area. However, once I signed up, I couldn't find a class to do Kriya. And then it takes forever for you to learn that, for you to expand on it. And in the meantime, I'm dealing with my own depression, issues around it, anxiety, worry, stress that I have, and how do I manage that? So yoga is a wonderful ability to do this, to calm the stress, to basically get into a meditative state. And it's great for your practice. However, there is more that can, it can expand. The only difficulty with yoga and so forth is it always takes time. It always takes a long practice. And sometimes, for example, we want to focus on our depression or anxiety immediately. We don't have the so many months to get into and to learn. Fourthly, what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus in on the state that he has you in. In the meditative state that 
that typically Sadhguru works in, it's called the alpha state. So by focusing in on an open mind, by focusing in on a mantra, you get into an alpha state of meditation. And as a hypnotherapist, as a spirit, spiritual regression teacher, I take you even deeper. I take you into the theta state. So this state is even deeper. Your mind is much calmer. You're able to process and see things clear, and you'll, you're able to process and grasp more information and quicker. The trouble is that in the alpha state, you're usually sitting up with your head up, eyes closed. In the theta state, you are so deep in trance that you're not able to sit up. Your head needs to be supported. You need to lie down and you are in a deep meditative or hypnotic trance. By exploring these areas, by going into these areas and expanding in these areas, you'll be amazed at how your meditative practice will grow, how the information will come even quicker, even faster to your understanding. Now, lastly, the greatest secret that he keeps from us is that you can connect. You as the light of God are able to connect. And the best way to connect, for example, is by doing spiritual journeys or having a divine being guide you. When you're in this state of state, when you can connect to the spiritual realm, suddenly you can ask a divine being to guide you in your spiritual journey. Now, what happens when that happens? They know you so well you're able to expand much faster. You're able to deal with your emotions much quicker. You're able to deal with your depression, your anxiety with their guidance. And the other thing as humans is sometimes we need to go to a place. And the place, there are many dimensions. For example, we're in the third dimensions. There are many higher dimensions that we can access, we can travel to, we can explore, and we can be guided in our own healing. This is the most powerful way to heal and to grow. And by doing spiritual journeys where you're guided by Shiva or Ganesh or Jesus or even an archangel or just a regular angel or some other divine being, you're suddenly able to expand quicker, faster, you're able to heal quicker, and you all have that capacity to do that. So when you heal the spirit, the body and mind will fall. Thank you for listening.